Thanks to Aman Isan's suggestion, we're doing a basic design on PhotoP because PhotoP is a free open source software that's available for that's available for us to design on and it has much more functionality more than Canva. We're going to be doing a basic logo, but as time goes on, we're gonna I'm gonna be teaching you and showing you different kinds of logos that we could be creating using the tools that Photo P has for us. So join me today. We're doing a basic one and we're gonna be learning a skill. We're gonna have lots of fun. Access www.photop.com. In this instance, we're going to be creating a new project where we are designing directly from Photo P. You're going to click on new project and you're going to rename your project you could set your pixels width and height over there and you could change the background of your canvas so the options that are available are white black transparent and you could also customize it to the one that you want so before you click on create there are other options that are available there's social canvas that you could choose which Photo P will give you the exact size of the canvas. So you could be designing YouTube thumbnails, profile, Twitter header, and then you could be designing print, photo, screen, etc. So for our design, we're going to stick with Instagram 1080 by 1080 because it is the similar size for logo design. And then we click on create. And then our canvas is displaying. So how photo P is structured. It uses tools on the left hand side that we will use to design our logo designs. And as they say, it is the free version of Photoshop. It's really quite a nice tool that you could be using to elevate the designs that you are currently designing from Canva and Adobe Express into a much more elevated way of designing your logo. I love it. But we're going to start small and then we're going to gradually do funky, awesome looking designs as we go along. With this logo, we're going to be using our text. Therefore, we're going to move our mouse and we're going to go to the text tool. Every time you see a tool that has a little arrow on the side, it tells you that that functionality or that tool has more than one type of tools attached to it. So we're going to start by selecting the type tool. We move to the canvas and we click once and the text tool starts showing for us to start typing. We're going to be typing in N and it will immediately show us the N and the color that you've selected. So in order for you to change the size of your letter, and the font or the heavy, you would use this menu on top and then you'd also use your align, etc. It's also good to take note that whichever tool that you've selected would show just below file as whatever tool you've selected. So if you're busy with the move tool, it would show there. We're now busy with a type tool and a big T is showing over there. I'm going to highlight my text and then I'm going to select the color and change it to red. So that's how you change the color of your letter that you're busy designing. Every time you select a tool, it stays with the tool. If you want to go back and change or move, our favorite tool would be the move tool. The move tool is your best friend because this is the tool that you use to move your layers or your designs when you're using ePhoto P. So I'm going to double click on my text because I want the size of my text to be larger than 99. I'm going to make it a 500 and the font that I've selected is folks. So in order for you to change the font, this is the font section. You would click on this drop down arrow and then you would pick the font that you would like to use. I'm happy with the folk font and then I'm going to select the correct and then I'm happy with that design. So I'm currently using the move tool. It allows me to move my text to wherever I want to move it. Just to move and bring your attention to the layer side. This is the most important section of your photo P experience and your design. This is where 
all of the layers that are on PhotoP get stacked. So PhotoP is a layer design tool. With Canva, they it doesn't show you the layers that you are currently working on. It, it stacks the layer on top of each other. With PhotoP, you get to move the layers around, you go to manipulate them and rasterize them. So you can manipulate the way that you're designing using this section, which is the layer section. Very important section for our design. And you could also use the functionality at the bottom of the page. If you don't like the layer, for example, you could delete it. If you want to add a new layer, you could click on new layer. So this bottom section will help you by adding and manipulating the layer section of your design. So I'm quite happy with my layer and I want another letter which is U. Therefore, I'm going to click on text and add a U. And I want this U to be a different color. Therefore, I'm going to make my U green and I click OK. And I select with a correct and then I can use my tool like that and then i move it closer to so our layers are separate from each other the u layer the n layer you can move them because they are separate from each other the next step of my design is i want to add a last layer when it comes to text i'm gonna click the text tool and i'm going to reduce the size to 100 and then i'm going to type my last text I don't like the red. I'm going to change that to green. I'm selecting my move tool and I'm moving the beginnings just below there. If you want to create a gap that falls in line with your U, you need to add a shape and that's the tool that we use for shapes. And when you hover on the line tool, there are rectangle, ellipse, etc. I want to use the ellipse tool because I would like to create a round shape or a roundish shape that follows the U so that I can create a gap just below that for design sake and for our learning journey. So I've selected the ellipse tool. Then I'm going to click and hold and create a ellipse shape. And I'm going to change the stroke and make it white. And I'm gonna change the fill and make it white. I'm going to select the just on top of the beginnings and I'm going to click on my U, move that just a little bit down as well and that creates that nice gap and I would like to add a sun for new beginnings then I'm going to go back to my ellipse tool and I'm going to click and hold and create a circle like that and it has a white stroke and a white fill therefore i want a yellow fill so i'm going to select on yellow go back to my move tool and click and have my nice sun like that last thing i would do is i would go back to my shapes and i would select line and in order for me to zoom in you press your command or control key and you say plus just to come in or zoom in and you are able to see what you're designing. And then I'm gonna click on my line tool and I'm going to create a line that is going to be stroked with a yellow, filled with a yellow, and I'm gonna just duplicate this all around so that I have a sunshiny kind of a design. I just controlled C and Control V to copy and paste. If you want to move your shape to a different direction then you're going to click where it says transform controls then you are able to transform the shape when you click and you hold your arrow it shows a little roundish arrow like that and it gives you control of your design and then you can move it to wherever you want to move it Without complicating things, that's your basic, gorgeous, colorful logo that you could be creating on PhotoP. There's lots of these that we're going to be doing together. So if you want to learn PhotoP and creating logos, please 
don't forget to subscribe if i'm adding value don't also forget to like the video now we are done with our design we're gonna go file and we're gonna export it as a png and because we've added that white layer we need to take off the white layer using our erase.bg or canva if you have canva pro if you want to try try it out go to my description below or you could use remove.bg then you click on save and it downloads you're going to go to www.remove.bg and you're going to load your png that you've just done and it will take off that extra white line you click on download and then we jump back to our photo p i'm going to go file and i'm going to save it as a psd file so that um, i have it whenever i need it and then i'm going to quickly convert it that's what we do on this channel right we convert it to a 3d logo so i'm going to go to my psd templates and i'm going to click on mockups and i'm going to scroll and i'm going to be using this one i double click on it and then it loads and then i'm going to double click where it says your logo here on the checkered box and then i hide my text by clicking on the eye then i click and i drag our 2d logo we've designed on photo p i size it i align it and i go file save a smart object or command s and it's updated and i click one so it says logo mockup and it is converted to a gorgeous looking new beginnings 3d logo if you like to learn logo design using canva we have a course that we've created just for you I'm going to start adding photo P um, lessons on there as well. But thanks for joining me today. I will see you on the next video.